Uh, this is a little quick Florida Politics 101, and we are December 6th, 2018. Today is the burial and final uh, um, ceremony, uh, wake, funeral for uh, former President Bush, uh, George H.W., and uh, that, of course, will be going on in Texas today. It's, uh, it's been a somber week this week, and... Uh, Let's talk about uh, something a little bit more uh, uplifting, which is the craziness that is Florida. So like and subscribe or hate and comment below. And uh, we're going to talk about the fiasco that is Brenda Snipes. Now, Brenda Snipes, for those who are uh, been living under a political rock, is the now suspended uh, elections supervisor of Broward County. Um, and she has appealed her suspension. She has also um, rescinded her resignation, which was supposed to happen on January 4. So why would she do that? Well, there's two big reasons. Um, Rick Scott, who is the governor until January 8th, he has decided to not uh, resign like everyone thought and take office on January 3rd in the Senate. And we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, she wants to do two things. One, um, from a purely personal standpoint, she wants to go on her own terms. So if she is reinstated by the uh, state Senate, then she gets to resign on her own terms. She gets the full pension. One of the reasons why I, I believe that she took the January 4th date as the resignation instead of December was clearly to, um, get a little bit more on her pension. Now, it's not going to be a big difference between resigning in November and January, but there is a little bit to say that. I think she wants to leave on her own terms. But it also does um, two big things. One, um, the optics will be perceived to not be well because it will be Republicans, mostly white, in the state Senate who will be convicting a black uh, supervisor elections from Broward, and that is the optics that she wants. She wants to force the issue of race into her incompetence. Um, look, it's going to be very odd to see Republicans, because remember, it's not a simple majority to convict, uh, to remove her from office. The dereliction of duty and uh, she does have that. She had a court order that told her not to destroy balance uh, in 2017, which she did for the election of 2016. She failed to reach deadlines, including the uh, uh, manual recount, um, or excuse me, the machine recount. She did not. She she failed. I mean, there was there was quote unquote done ten minutes before the time to do it, and she didn't submit them until two minutes afterwards. Um, there's commingling of ballots. There were 205 ballots that were set aside to check the authenticity. Um, and some of those had rejected ballots. They were commingled and then they were counted. So there, there's there's a ton of issues. But the uh, it'll be odd to see Republicans also bring up the fact that, and this is simply based on statistical analysis, had the Democrats, Democratic ballot that she created, for the general election, had that ballot been done correctly, and uh, there were three columns of voting, and for people who forget, the top ballot was, you know, this is a ballot, this is the date in English, Spanish, Creole, and then the instructions on the ballot, English, Spanish, Creole, and then the Senate race, and then if you lived in areas that had a contested congressional race, the congressional race, and it became more apparent in in the district that is mostly in Dade, which did not have a Republican challenger, as that undervote for the Senate was in some places 15%. The fact that this was the only county where the Senate exceeded the the Senate undervote exceeded the governor undervote by more than a percent, it exceeded it by three. And you can't say, well, it's because of the South Florida thing, because Miami Dade and Palm Beach County all voted for the Senate more than they voted for the governor's race. Under statistical analysis, as a best case scenario for Republicans, Rick Scott's victory, which would have been just under 10,000, which is the official, would have been down to about 1,500. 
under a worst case scenario, Rick Scott loses election. So it's going to be funny to hear Republicans make the argument that the Democrats had an election stolen from them. And it's going to be funny for Democrats to say no. Or do Democrats make the same argument? Because if it's a simple, you know, a simple one or two vote that convicts her to remove her from office, you know, remember, Republicans have to, they have to pull in Democrats. This is not a simple majority vote. This is impeachment. This is a simple, essentially an impeachment, not a simple majority vote. Uh, but there's going to be a lot of Democratic pressure to not convict. And uh, if they don't convict, then when she ultimately does resign, if she chooses to resign, okay, it'll be Governor DeSantis who makes the replacement. And if history brings itself up, the reason why Brenda Snipes got the job in the first place is because Jeb Bush did not want to make it look very partisan and political. And so appointed her, a retired teacher, somebody that people respected, to replace Mary Molfan, who was an absolute disaster as the uh, Broward um, supervisor of elections. So the later it goes down the line, the more likely it is to be a Democrat, the less likely it is to be partisan. Even if it is a partisan appointment, uh, it'll be less likely to make more accepting Republican steps, like um, not putting early voting sites at universities, putting them instead in senior citizen areas. Um, Brenda Snipes had a seven-day early voting window for the primary and the full amount for the general. Um, for cost certainty, they, the, the replacement could choose to do fewer dates, choose to not do as many polling spots. There were early voting spots that had tens of thousands and early voting spots that had a few thousand. So there, there could be shifting in resources. Um, it is a presidential year, so the, the expected totals for the general will be higher, but on-day voting is much lower. So could there could be fewer resources spent that way? It's going to be departmental change. But if Brenda Snipes keeps her job and then resigns, it's far less likely he's going to choose, Ron DeSantis is going to choose somebody to give, going to give him cover because a, a Democrat is going to win that office in 2020. It's an elected official, as they all are now, not just in Broward. Um, but if, it, if, if Rick Scott gets his way and she is removed and his appointee gets to set the agenda, it gives Ron DeSantis cover. So Democrats are aware of this. They also know that they basically would be accepting the fact that she destroyed Democratic ballots in a contested primary and that she cost them a Senate seat for six years. Mm. It's going to be interesting come this January uh, to see if the state Senate does bring it up, which I think they will, and because uh, they don't want to pay her more money than they have to, um, even though technically it will not be paid um, until they convict. Or until they, uh, I guess, don't convict. Um, but and at some point, she would get her job back if there is no office. So it'll it'll be funny. Now, why did Rick Scott not resign, or not? He's not planning on resigning now, uh, and he's actually going to hold up uh, accepting his Senate seat until after the official date, which is January seven. Um, and some people have said, well. Is it simply some sort of issue with the lieutenant governor? I don't think so. I just I just don't think, you know, having Carlos uh, Lopez Quintero be the guy for five days just seems kind of odd. Maybe Florida would be better served to move the acceptance dates the same as the Senate um, and Congress when it when it does its thing. But no, no I don't think it's that. Um, I don't also think that it is. Uh, he's trying to intentionally lower. Florida's prestige in the Senate. So how the Senate works is it's all based on seniority um, when it comes to positions of uh, office. On the Republican side, it is... Um, and the Democratic side, they do their own thing. But as of uh, order of 
of um, of where you rank as a senator, you get a better position when you're closer up. Um, there were, I think there were 10 newly elected senators this election, but how they break it down when they, amongst those 10, they also divide that. So it's not like they're all the same. So the division goes, which hasn't happened since Hubert H. Humphrey, former vice president, hasn't happened in a very long time. Then former senators, then former representatives, and then former governors. So on that list, he would be, you know, it's the fourth breakdown. Of the 10 that have been newly elected, seven of them are former congressmen. So he would only be ahead of two other uh, rep, uh, two other senators, potentially. Um, he's only moving behind two of them. He's moving behind, um, in Missouri, he's moving behind Josh uh, Howley. And he's moving behind, uh, who would be, now he's 99 instead of 100. And he's moving behind... Uh, Mitt Romney. Now, Mitt Romney is a former governor, even though it's a governor of a different state than what he's going to represent in the Senate. That still counts. But the next tiebreaker is population, and Florida is a much bigger state than Utah, so technically it would have been 98. Um, or actually, it would have been 98. He's going to drop down to 100. It's not um, that huge of a difference. I'd also may, uh, I think privately, a lot of people have thought that Rick Scott is maybe going to run for a re-election, maybe run for vice president in six years, uh, if, if offered the position. Um, but I don't think he's worried about two spots on the list. Um, and he doesn't seem like he, that he is worried about it. So, um, yeah, it, 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 it's not that big of a deal. It's more of a big of a deal if Carlos Silva's compared doesn't get to call himself a former governor when he runs for... Potentially runs for mayor of Miami Dade. Um, you can say he's just former lieutenant governor. Uh, but that's sort of the long and the short of it today. And uh, when we get more into Brendan Snipes in the next year, we'll uh, talk about it. But uh, have a nice day and uh, we'll see you around.